you to ask the question, do I have to change the stuff that I do in terms of laundry and the products? Not often, um, sometimes you may we'll see in a minute, but if you have to use heavy duty bleachers and, and nappy sand and things like that, then the way to do that is simply to put it in a laundry bucket and pour it down the toilet. That way all those harmful strong chemicals aren't going on the soil and killing the soil life. And the most important thing about growing food and growing plants in the garden is the health of the soil, that's the secret. So if we make sure the soil is healthy um, and we're not putting too much alkaline stuff and too much soggy stuff on there and too much chemicals on there, uh, you won't create sterile soil, you have healthy soil and healthy gardens and healthy food. Just uh, diverging from that, well, this is a, um, a graph, it's easy to take from the web of some typical components of laundry detergent. So you can see here, we've got some, some blue and red stripes. The, the red ones is the amount of phosphorus that some detergents have, and, and the blue is the amount of salt that some things have. And the other thing to notice, of course, is that you'll notice that there's a shift in being fully uh, capital letters to lower case. All the ones that are capital letters are powders. And all the ones that are lower case are liquids. So if you're not using a liquid in the laundry, maybe you can be changing. There are some powders, in fact, that are okay, but generally they bulk up powders with salt. So you think you can go for money. But it rarely is you need to look at changing some simple things like that. In fact, I'm not in this graph, but the lowest one about here for a powder is in fact Lux Soap Flux. And some of you are old enough to know what they are, but uh, <coughs> what Greg and I used to use, one might see you, but that's what, they have the lowest amount of salt and phosphorus of all the powders. There are lots of options about how we um, disperse the grey water, whether it's going to be uh, you know, under the ground, under the lawn, under mulch, in a trench, what's in scenarios. But as you see from the top table, there's only three things you can do. You can use a man, you can bucket it. You can go to the laundry, grab a laundry bucket, go outside and throw it on the neighbor's kids. Well, not really, but that, that, you know, then you can use a laundry bucket to do that. Uh, obviously, most people have what's called a primary treat, which means no treatment system, where you just divert the grey water, fill the hair and use out of the water, and pump it to uh, the garden beds. And the final one, secondary treatment, is if you've got lots, lots of money. Uh, because those systems would probably set you back roughly about $10,000 plus installed. And we'll look at some of those systems shortly. What's involved? Well, you need to have an application to the council, um, some drawings, uh, an irrigation plan, a little bit of a home plan, location of any, if you're still on septic staff course, or where the sewer line is, uh, got to pay some money. Fees are set not by council but by the state health department. Some councils, I don't think it's the in this category, some councils actually reimburse you once they've approved and inspect the system. Some councils are going to charge half the fees. So um, I don't think it's the to come to the party yet, but there is a, a fee. And then you need to have a plumber for some of the things, but under the code of practice, you can install the irrigation and do most of the work yourself. But you need to have a plumber to sign up all the legal things and connection is connected to the sewer line. And then once it's all installed and working, can become inspected, issue the permit to use, and away we go. There are two main types, other than manual bucking I mentioned earlier, what are called diversion devices. Uh, and you can have them by gravity if you've got enough fall, but most people have pump systems. And then if you're really serious, about recycling and want to use it to flush a toilet or for a cold water source of laundry, you use a treatment system. There's only two approved, there's only one approved in that way for that, and the second one going through approval now. So I thought I might just go through quickly some slides of the kind of things that are available. Well, first of all, there is lots of them. There are lots of grey water systems that are approved in WA, some of those are not uh, in use, they've been superseded, some have gone a bit obsolete, but your local council can provide you with a list of approved systems. 
or you can download it from the web very easily from Environmental Health, the State Health Department, Environmental Health has that information. So I'm going through a few quick systems. I was wondering if I look at that, any comments and stuff like that, just quickly going through, save your time. You have filters or tank systems and trenches. You can have double tank systems and pumps and alarms, etc. So a municipal tank. Uh, you have a filter and a pump pit scenario. And then there's a whole range of others that are around the place, like the data probe. You have a single fixture typically, where you can enclose it in a pit and you can use the whole house, but typically for a single fixture. Some go under the sink, some are outside, laundries, etc. Um, some, uh, most of these ones work um, just by uh, immediate pump outs. Um, some are double gravity, some have now pumps associated with them. There's some earlier things or some earlier products that have now been changed. Um, you can see how they may be installed by digging up the aluminium house if you want to retrofit your house digging up the pavement or whatever, applying the pipes, isolating the laundry bathroom pipe, putting it through a kind of system where they do that or put a pump pit, there's all different scenarios and uh, then use it on the garden. The new one has just been approved uh, I think last year. Various uh, been around for a little while. Uh, I think the great boss wave may not uh, anymore, but um, there still might be some models around the place. Some have amended soils, there's a few of those around the place. If you live in a water catchment area and you're concerned about the, the effluent going into the water table, it might trap the nutrients. These two are the ones that are treatment systems. The new being, there are one or two of those that are more well installed in the WA. And that's the one you can, if it is approved, to, um, to put back into your toilet or to um, do for laundry and, and also irrigation as well. The Nova Grey is the uh, one that's going through that process now. It is a treatment system, it has a patching kit, so you can see basically what happens here. Grey water comes out uh, into a patching kit, uh, gets pumped up into the treatment, uh, and then off it goes to. To wherever. Now with all grey water systems you have to have some maintenance, whether you have filters or tanks or what it might be, you have to basically do some maintenance once or twice a week at least, typically, depending on how many teenagers you have and how much uh, long showers you <laughs> have and how many young kids you have with lots of washing uh, and so on. And you've got girls with long hair and so it goes on. So Usually, when the bin goes out, you clean the fillers, all right, or whatever the maintenance schedule would be. Some have very little maintenance, some have automatic backwash filters that blow that automatically <coughs> slightly with an air blower. Um, some have tank systems that perfectly slow it up for five years. So there's a whole range of things out there. But if you don't do the maintenance, things blocked up, it overflows the sewer, not wait, you're wasting the water. So we don't want to do that. Alright, <coughs> that's grey water. And again, if you want to ask a question, that's fine, or if you want to just wait till I'm out there and talk about some stuff that I mentioned, those coming a bit late, there are brochures out there from lots of different systems. In fact, there are uh, flyers on grey water use from the grey water industry group. There are three sheets back to back, six back sheets, all about grey water, about the version device, about the maintenance, about the safety. So they're out on the water store, you can grab those for free, just grab back sheets and go away being informed. Rainwater tanks. Now rainwater tanks of course uh, come in all shapes sizes. As you can see here, some you bury, some you put on your decking, uh, depending on uh, what you want to do with the water and what you want to store. So